today we are going to start with the properties of the fluid as we have discussed in our introductory class what are the fluids your liquid and the gases have the common characteristics in which they differ from the solids like fluids lack the ability to offer the permanent resistance to a deforming force fluids flow under the action of the forces with continuous deformation hence fluids unable to retain any unsupported shape flow under its own weight and takes the shape of any solid body with which it comes into contact these are the main properties of the fluids those are going to give you a differentiating points with the solids and you can compare very easily the deformation cap cap capacity and capability of any fluid if your fluid lack the ability to offer the permanent resistance to a deforming force so what does it means that it can flow under the action of the applied forces these forces may be any one but the internal resistance will be in the form of shear stresses these shear stresses are very small and also going to be at a minimum values or the zero shear forces are going to be generated when any liquid or any object starts flowing and this deformation will be a continuous one this deformation is very important to analyze any structure or with which the fluid is giving you a contact why because if it your fluid is not able to retain any shape so what does it means that it must going to be attain a shape of the solid object in which it is going to be a contact so contact may be like a dam wall if the wall of the dam is going to be constructed it is a solid one and if the water is going to be retained going to be supported by this wall then it is going to be have a contact with this particular solid object and further it is going to give you a shape of that particular solid body and according to this reaction and the deformation cap capability of this solid object this fluid is going to be behaved similarly if in running condition in open channels fluid is going to be flowing then in open channels its behavior will be in a continuous deformational phase if the gravitational flows are going to be observed then the water can flow or any fluid can flow under its own weight its weight forces will, will be or the mass forces will be responsible to produce the continuous deformation giving you the internal shear stresses equal to zero or the shear internal resistance equal to zero deformation in fluids is caused by the shearing force as shown in the figure which acts tangentially to the surface to which they are applied and cause the material originally occupying the space a b c d to deform to a b dash c dash and d here in this figure along with this text you can see in which you can see the a b c d the total surface of the of any object in which the fluid has been uh, going to be flow the ad may be a solid con with a solid contact but your bc is the upper surface of the water that can flow if any force is going to be applied internal shear force or internal force is going to be applied that is going to move the fluid in the right direction from left to right so what does it means that its upper surface that is bc now deformed or going to be changed its shape from its original position these point b is going to be shifted towards point b dash and c is shifted towards c dash this rotation or this movement displacement is due to the shear forces or the internal due to the applied forces but due to the internal shear stresses okay so this is going to give you a tangentially acting shear force acting on the surface of the of the fluid a fluid is a substance which deforms continuously under the action of shear forces however small they may be this is going to conform our state our uh, statement that we have discussed earlier many times in the introductory lecture and also in the start over here that your fluid deforms continuously under the action of the shear forces however small they may be 
mean the smaller values you can observe for the fluids but still they exist and finally you are going to be observe the deformation that is continuing with respect to time and this deformation is measured in terms of rotation that is going to be give you an strain shear strain the shear stresses are going to give you a shear strain that is going to be measured in terms of angle phi shown in the figure so if you are going to be see in the figure b a b dash this angle is going to be represented in the figure with the phi this phi is finally going to be you can say it is a shear strain the deformation as a result of applied shear force if the force is going to be applied then internal deformation is going to be produced within the fluid surface whole of the surface and then it this particular surface will give you the strain why a and d points are not going to be moved we are considering this is going to give you a, a contact with the boundary of the solid surface so due to the frictional forces this is considered as a fixed a and d point however the b and c is considered as the surface of the fluid and due to the applied forces the surface of the fluid is going to be moved going to be deformed into b dash and c dash giving you a shear strain equal to phi okay so conversely it follows that the same statement can be followed by the another fact or another statement that if the fluid is at rest there can be no shearing force acting and therefore all the forces in the fluid must be perpendicular to the planes upon which they act okay so this is another fact that if your fluid is at rest so what does it means no shearing force is going to be acting on the surface of the fluid and finally your all of the forces will be perpendicular to the plane of which they act okay there will be no tangential effect of the forces uh, upon the surface only the perpendicular forces mean your ab will be the ab no shear strain it is not going to be shifted towards b dash okay your cd will remain cd so the shear strain angular rotation phi is not going to be produced within an object within a fluid object once the shear force is mean your body is at rest so this is another fact so two facts are there number one if your body is going to be moved fluid is going to be in a moving position second one is if it is at rest so if it is moving under the applied forces maybe gravitational forces or any other kind of applied force so what is going to be happened a continuous deformation is going to be observed within the fluids under the application of the shear force the internal shear stresses are going to be generated and those are responsible to deformed the fluid surface from one point to another point here in this figure from b to b dash and finally it is going to give you a deformation in the form of angular shear strain equal to phi now particularly we are interested in the shear stress in the moving fluids at rest of course there is no applied force there is no internal resistance so there is no concept of dealing the relationship of the stresses to the strains but once your fluid is in a moving position okay it is flowing so what does it means that the shear stresses are generated and due to those shear stresses the continuous deformations are going to be produced and we are interested in now the relationship between the stresses and the strains why because like the solids if you are going to be able to generate a relationship between stress and strains then you will be able to get a constant of proportionality mean any proportion you may have between or any relation you may have between stress and strains so similarly if the young modulus is the constant of of proportionality between the stress and strain relationship for the solids so there must be a certain relationship for the stresses and the strains generated within the fluid moving fluid so that we are going to be able to generate or just to relate the stresses with the strains with the help of any constant of proportionality so uh, we can say that there can be no shear stress in the fluid at rest 
shear stresses are developed when the fluid is in motion we have also uh, just uh, concluded this thing in the last slide but if the particles of the fluid move relative to each other so that they have different velocities causing the original shape of the fluid to become distorted this is the one case if the particles of the fluid in a moving condition they also going to be moved relative to each other the one thing is that you are going to be have an overall distortion or the displacement of the fluid object and second thing is that within the fluid object how the particles of the fluid inside are going to be moved relative to each other this is the second question okay so if we are going to talk we are uh, able to talk about the movement relative movement of the fluid particles with each other then we can say that there are two options one option is that they have different velocities causing the original shape of the fluid to become distorted but on the other hand the velocity of the fluid is the same at every point mean relative to each other there is no difference of the velocity the each particle of the velocity under the action of the applied forces is going to be give you the same velocity at every point so what you can say no shear stresses will be produced it will be the same as the the fluid is at rest since the fluid particles are at rest relative to each other okay so those are moving but in a uniform manner but if the velocity of the fluid particles is going to be changed with respect to each other then finally distorted shape of the fluid object you are at a global level uh, you can observed usually we are concerned with the flow past a solid boundary this is very important because whether your fluid is running in a open channel flowing in open channel or uh, in a closed conduit or a pipe for both of the cases it must have a contact with a solid boundary either from whole of the sides in a periphery form or just at the bottom if the if your water is flowing in a uh, uh, channels open channels then you can observe that there is a contact of the water or the fluid with the solid boundary at the bottom but the surface is free okay it is not having a contact on the sides it may have a contact at the bottom it may have contact but on the surface it is going to give you a free contact so what does it means that due to the friction also and at the bottom you can observe the variation of the velocity within the layers of the fluid starting from the bottom till the surface so the fluids in contact with the boundary adheres to it and will therefore have the same velocity as the boundary so whatever the velocity you are going to be considering at the boundary with the solid so the solid boundary the all of the water particles the sorry fluid for particles having the same velocity but as you are moving towards the upper surface okay you if you are going to be say that this is a wide distance starting zero from the bottom and the maximum wide distance at the surface so if you are going to start from the zero distance at the boundary at the bottom then as you increase the wide distance you move towards the surface from the bottom then what you can uh, say that your velocity within the layers is going to be changed okay so considering the successive layers parallel to the boundary the velocity of the fluid will vary from layer to layer as y increases so that in the figure also we will discuss in, in the coming slide so if a b c d in the later in the previous slide as we have a surface we have considered a surface a b c d the same surface we are going to be consider again that is going to represent an element in a fluid with thickness s perpendicular to the diagram then the force f will act over an area a equal to b c multiplied by c so what does it means for that we need to be just to understand we need to move to this uh, next one slide that what we are talking about we have bc the going to show you the surface of the water and ad that is the layer of the water having a contact with the solid boundary okay first of all you must understand that and now secondly if we talk about the surface okay on the right hand side of this figure you can see the y distance okay that y distance is going to be increased okay from zero at the d point and the maximum value of the y you can observe at the c okay so as you are going to be increase the y distance then in the next figure on the right hand side the middle one fig the uh, figure will show you the layers the movement of the layers 
in the direction of the applied forces okay as y increases then each layer has a certain velocity in the direction of applied force now if we are interested to calculate or to determine the shear stress then what is the formula of the shear stress shear stress is equal to or any stress is equal to force per unit area so what is the force that is applied one in the right direction and what is the area on which that force is going to be applied that will be the area in one dimension it will be bc the surface length and the uh, dimension thickness of the water or the fluid inside or perpendicular to the boat perpendicular to the paper okay so whatever the surface you are considering in two dimensional you can see the surface but what is the thickness okay this thickness this is the depth you can say C, D and A, B is the depth of the, of the fluid or what is the thickness, mean width. That will be in perpendicular direction to this plane that we can see right now. So inside the plane, the thickness of the water, the width of the water will be, we are going to considering, consider it as S. So your B, C multiplied by S. One length and width is S. So length multiplied by width will give you the area on which the shear force is going to be applied. So this F over A will give you the shear stress. Now we talk about the variation of the velocity. In the rightmost figure, you will see the variation of the velocity with respect to Y or the variation of the Y with respect to velocity. So you can see as Y increases, the velocity of each layer is also going to be increases. Okay, so if we move up one by one, we move at certain level at the top, the y is maximum. So what does it mean? Your velocity is also maximum. So the maximum velocity you are observing at the free surface at the top when y is maximum and the minimum velocity or the zero velocity at the point where you are getting the boundary of the fluid with the uh, solid object, solid boundary. Okay, so you are going to be considered as a fixed support, like aap ek support ki taraf so consider karenge ke water or the fluid having a contact with the solid object. So it is going to give you a zero velocity and as it is moving up, it is going to give you the more velocities and it will be maximum when you will come up as Y increases till the upper surface, the top surface of the water. So in this way, we are getting, uh, we can calculate the shear stress. Now the deformation as a result of this shear stress, how much deformation is going to be produced and what this deformation is. This deformation is measured by the angle phi, the shear strain as I, I have told you. That will be proportional to the shear stress. In a solid, phi will be a fixed quantity for a given value of ta or shear stress since a solid can resist the shear stress permanently. So what you can do directly, you can relate your stresses with the strains but here for the fluids the shear strain phi will continue to increase with the time and the fluid will flow at the end okay when your shear strain will be maximum mean deformation will be maximum then it starts flowing in the fluid uh, it is found experimentally that in a true fluid fluid the rate of shear strain or the shear strain per unit time is directly proportional to the shear stress. So, what is the difference? The first difference between the solid, technically the solid and the fluids you can observe over here. Okay, that in the in solids your shear stresses are directly proportional to shear strain. But here for the fluids your shear stresses are directly proportional to the rate of the shear strain. Why? Because here for the fluids, your strains, your deformations are going to be depend on the time. Okay, it's not a permanent deformation that once you are having a deformation, it is going to be a, going to give you a permanent throughout the time or life of the structure. This is not going to be happened. For the fluid, as the time is going to be increased, then your deformation is also going to be increased. Okay, and then finally the time will come when it is going to give you a complete flowable conditions for the fluid. So, your rate of strain is very important. Okay, so or the strain rate is very important. So, your rate is always related with the time. So, what you can say for the fluid, how you can drive it uh, numerically, 
that your shear strain phi is equal to x over y let's suppose okay how to calculate y, uh, shear strain first of all you must know that shear strain will be equal to phi will be equal to x over y mean x is any horizontal distance in between okay and y is the vertical distance so x over y is the base over uh, perpendicular will give you the phi this angle okay if it is considered very small angle so tan of phi of for the very small angles will be equal to phi okay so for very very small angles we are considering the tan phi equal to phi so phi is the shear strain it will be equal to x over y now rate of the shear strain will be x over y divided by t okay so you can separate out x over t and then y separately so x over t this is distance rate of the displacement with respect to time okay so rate of displacement will be equal to the velocity so u small u is going to represent the velocity of the fluid with respect to the y distance so u over y finally you are having this formula to calculate the rate of the shear strain now your uh, shear stresses how you can get that your shear stresses are directly proportional to the rate of shear strain so ta will be equal to you directly proportional to u over y as we have uh, uh, derived earlier for the shear strain now if you are going to be replace your uh, proportionality with the constant then it will be ta is equal to constant into u over y so finally you are getting this constant equal to mu what mu is this mu is actually is a constant of proportionality and is known as dynamic viscosity mu for the fluid so like your e value in the of in the solid objects if for the this is young modulus but for the fluids this is this proportionality constant is not the young modulus it is mu that is going to be called as dynamic viscosity so your fluid stiffness is going to be depends on the viscosity that particular property and we will discuss in detail now onward that what is this viscosity means and how you are going to be discussed this particular law in equation 1.2 ta is equal to mu d u over d y it is going to be called as the newton's law of viscosity the value of mu depends upon the fluid under consideration of course aapke paas jo bhi fluid hoga that depends your uh, fluid depends on this particular mu or the viscosity that constant and that constant depends on the type of the fluid okay so ta is equal to mu d u over d y so that you, this formula you need to be keep in your mind and also you need to keep in your mind what this formula is going to be called as and what uh, law is after that that is newton's law of viscosity now very specifically you can give a difference between the solid and the fluids after the summarizing the discussions we have done till now okay for a solid the strain is a function of the applied stresses provided that the elastic limit is not exceeded but for a fluid the rate of strain is proportional to the applied stresses i have told you and we have also derived this thing okay for the solid your stresses are directly proportional to the strains but for the fluid your stresses are directly proportional to rate of the strain okay why because the strains in the fluids depends on the time these are not the permanent deformations you are going to observe for the fluids these are continuous deformations with respect to time so if the continuous word be there then the rate of strain matters over there not only the strains so fluids is going to give you the relationship of the stresses applied stresses with the rate of the strain not the strains like solids number 2 the strain in the solid is independent of the time over which the force is applied and if the elastic limit is not exceeded the deformation disappears when the force is removed okay within the elastic limit for the solids this young modulus uh, law exist over there okay the that if uh, you are going to be apply any force or any stresses is going are going to be generated within a solid body and those stresses are within the, the elastic limit then what is going to be happened so you are going to be have this linear relationship between stresses and strains proportion proportional relationship between stress and strain till the elastic limit once the elastic limit exceeds what is going to be happened it is going to be come back to its original position it it will not come back to its original position
okay and if it is within the elastic limit then your body will come back to its original position but for the flute a flute continues to flow for as long as the force is applied and will not recover its original form when the force is removed why because it not going to give you a deformation that is uh, having any condition of the elastic limit there is no certain concept of the elastic limit for the flutes once the deformation be there it is always permanent okay so it is not going to be your fluid will not come back to its original form once force is removed as its flow so it is going to be flowing continuously in that particular way so shear strains are going to give you a continuous values not the permanent so in most cases substances can so the substances can be classified easily as either solids or the fluids however certain cases like pitch glass appear to be solids because their rate of deformation under their own weight is very small pitch is actually a fluid which will flow and spread out over a surface under its own weight but it will take days to do so rather than uh, the milliseconds similarly solids will flow and become plastic when subjected to the forces sufficiently large to produce a stress in the material which exceeds the elastic limit they will also show you a creep behavior under the sustained loading I means solids can behave uh, the creep it will show you a creep behavior under the sustained loading so that the deformation increases with the time so a plastic substance does not meet the definition of a true fluid since the shear stress must exceed a certain minimum value before the flow commences this discussion in this particular slide is going to give you an idea about the uh, particularly the for the objects those are not going to be considered as a solid and not the fluid okay so apparently they are solid but they are not uh, behaving as a particular solid they are uh, going to show you a behavior that is not of the fluid and not of the solid in between anywhere okay so your solids particularly solids can give you the strains those are in terms of the rate of strain mean depends on time like creep and shrinkage shrinkage is going to give you a very short time duration in which deformations are going to observe but creep is a very you can say a deformational behavior of for the solids that is going to give you deformations under the sustained loading after the years okay so like 50 years after 100 years you are going to be say that how much uh, uh, deformation is going to be produced within a solid object under the sustained loading that sustained loading may be the live load may be the dead load for the structure so if loads are going to be applied and they keep on sustaining on that particular structure for the years okay for a very long duration and very long time then what is the deformation is going to be uh, produced within the structure so that is also going to be depends mean to say that all of the time that definition we have for all type of the solids and the fluids that difference differentiation that we have done we have we have concluded right now that the fluids are going to give you the stress is related to the rate of the strain it not holds true all the time for the fluid sometimes for the like creep behavior uh, the solids can have the rate of strain relationship with the stresses so rate of strain exist okay for solids also and similarly for the specific properties of the solids can exist for the fluids like plastic behavior okay so plasticity is actually a uh, uh, behavior that is related with the solid objects but those are actually behaving those solids as a fluids so you can say those are uh, those are acting as a fluid okay so they can flow okay so you can say that certain fluids does not hold the proper definition of the fluid they can consider as an solid or a kind of a solid and most of the time the solids does not hold the definition of the solids actually they can uh, categorize uh, in with these definitions with respect to the fluids